thank you again for uh, thank you Karen for inviting me. I'm very grateful. And this presentation is called New Perspective on Senior Fitness, Chronological versus Physiological Age. Now, I got to give you a little uh, back backstory. So one of the biggest things that I'm trying to do is bridge the gap between fitness industry and healthcare providers. And I do these type of presentations because I believe there's a need for a holistic approach that can only be done by all of us working together. And between the fitness industry healthcare providers, we have healthcare uh, senior advocate groups and everything else in between. Um, now, as we're moving out of COVID, I think it's even more important that we try to, to, to get the troops together so we can meet mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, I'm gonna say this for the record. You see this young gentleman here in red. So I'm gonna dedicate this presentation to him. He was my super client, Nick. He passed away recently. You guys ready for the group exercise part? Now remember the title, right? Chronological versus physiological age. Now, on paper in the fitness industry, because I can speak from that background, on paper will say, hey, I, you have a 75 year old client, what type of exercises should that person only do? Then you have another person who's 69 on paper right before you meet them. There's this set of exercises and biases based on chronological age. So then I have on paper, well, I'm gonna meet an 88 year old. So that person, because he or she is 88, I'm only allowed to do certain exercises. Now, my friends, can everybody see me? Everybody can see me. I'm smiling for a reason. They say, I feel like a game show, a game show host. You're gonna guess who is 75, I'm gonna play the video, who's 69 and who's 88. Here we go. Inhale, go, come on guys, synchronize it. Yes. These are real people, not actors. Kind of synchronized. Three, two, time. And perfect time. All right. So, do you think she's 88, 69, or 75? It's hard, right? Okay. So, I'll, because of our time <laughs> sensitivity, I'm going to answer. She is 75 youngs at the time of this video. He is 69 years young at the time of the video, and he was 88 years young at the time of the video. Wow. So from chronological versus physiological age, you can see where I'm going with this. And anything I'm going to share is going to be based on science. Physiological age, this is where the meat and potatoes of this presentation is. Very simple, my friend. Medical definition is our uh, physiological age are judged in terms of physiological development. That's what that is. So we got chronological age versus physiological age. So for, th for this next screen I'm gonna show, she is 69 years young. She is doing this because she wanted to learn how to do this and she built up to this. So from the chronological age point of view, uh, if I were just gonna base my program on that, and of course we base preconditions and everything else into the program, I would say you should not do any of that stuff. However, her physical capacity, because I did an assessment with her, if you guys ever train or take a group X class, you may do a warm up, or if you did one to one, the individual, your trainer should be doing a physical assessment to assess your mobility and flexibility. That's where we can determine someone's physical capacity. And I determined, and we both determined that she can learn certain things within reason because she may want to do some stuff that I probably would not endorse, but that was something. So I don't know about you. I don't mind academic terms and definitions, but I like just real world translation. So this is a re real world translation of what functional ability is. You guys ready? An example of functional ability is this. Julio, I've had so much to be thankful because of your class. The time spent on balance enables me to close my eyes and enjoy the shower and shampoo. Yay, Julio. Marilyn, age 84. That's functional ability, her ability to enjoy the shower and shampoo. Does that kind of make sense, my friends? Mm -hmm. Who's, mm -hmm. Somebody's laughing, which is good. <laughs> so again, I like to just, I like definitions, but I like to break them down. Mm. Health, and a healthy aging that is developing and maintaining the functional ability, her ability to shower with her eyes closed, and enable well-being in older age. I'm huge on that. Now, if a person feels really great by doing a headstand, then that's great. 
you know, so it's all relative, my friends. And I'm, I'm very sure that all of you can share a few examples of functional ability in your life. And, and, and you know, and I'm pretty sure they, they won't be that different because we have more similarities than not. So the Spartan method involves a synchronicity of Western exercise science and Eastern holistic arts that helps senior overcome the perception of limitation. And I'll get into that really briefly and movement, promote acuity and develop self-confidence. And you're gonna notice I have a word bold, empowerment. Physical activity, exercise, anything can lead to empowerment. I have yet to have anybody not feel empowered after working out. And then just the science behind what I'm doing, the Spartan method is originates from two widely used methods in the health and fitness professional. It's the SMART goals for setting. SMART goals are also used in business. So you set like a numerical goal of revenue, and then you work from there. The set principle is something that I'm going to explain to you really briefly. Is it basically is if I'm if I want to be a pitcher, if I want to be better at pitching, I have to do pitching exercises, not soccer exercises. In the clinical setting, experts treat symptom and may prescribe exercise as preventive care. However, the exercises might be a general activity such as walking. Some of you may have been prescribed walking from your doctor. Right. And it's based on chronological age. Research evidence is showing that older adult physical activity should be based more on physiological age. And I have all the resources. As fitness professionals, we can play a vital role in optimizing the doctor's prescription by providing additional exercise variability with appropriate intensity to promote preserving or ideally improving our client's physical capacity. So last but not least, there is a need for a more holistic approach, which can be achieved only through a concerted effort between the fitness industry and healthcare provider. Wow. And that is my presentation. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Oh, wonderful. Very good. <laughs>